So hello and welcome to our study of optimization one. So um before we study optimization, there are certain things that we need to know to help us understand the course. So we'll be using the two first videos, the first two lessons to go through some prerequisites. Okay, so in this lesson we'll be talking about the definiteness of a matrix. So that's very, very important when we are optimizing functions. So um, we will learn how to find the definiteness of a matrix using two ways. Okay, so we use when we can. Um, we will learn when we can use argument values, and we also learn when we can use leading principal determinants. So let's take the first way using argument values. Okay, so let's take some definitions. <coughs> so a symmetric matrix B is said to be positive definite if all its argument values are positive. Okay, so when all the argument values are positive, then we have a symmetric um sorry, a positive definite matrix. Okay. So note that always we deal with a symmetric matrix B. So if you have B and B is not symmetric, a way to make B symmetric is to find the sum of B, then a transpose of B, all times half. Okay, so this is how we make a matrix symmetric if it is not. So the second one thing is that a symmetric matrix B is said to be positive semi-definite if its argument values are greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so this is the case we have positives and we have a zero. Okay, so in this case we see the matrix is positive semi-definite. So the third one, when the argument values are all negative, then we see we have a negative definite matrix. Then when our argument values we have negatives and we also have a zero, then <coughs> that matrix is said to be a negative semi definite. Okay. So the last condition is when we have negatives and positives. So here the signs alternate. Okay, so in this case, since that wouldn't fall under all the four things that we've talked about, we see that matrix is indefinite. Okay. So let's take some examples. So we are going to find the definiteness of the following symmetric matrices. Okay, so the question has told us our matrices are um, symmetric. So that means we pass the first test. So let's take the first one. So um, we find for argument values and we use this formula here. So we subtract lambda from the diagonals. And that way you can see here. So after this, we find the determinant. So it will be this time this, then minus this time this. And that gives us this. So after that, we work around that and we get this characteristic equation. So finding for the determinant is going to give us 3 and 1. So since our argument values are all positive, then our matrix B is said to be positive definite. So you see, that's how we do it. It's very simple. So the second way, the second example, sorry. So when we find for the argument value, okay, we are going to get this to be the characteristic equation. I know you know how to go through these steps. And when we solve that, we are going to get our argument values to be 0 or 2. So you can see here we have positive here and we have 0 here. So in this case, our matrix is said to be positive semi-definite. Okay, based on the rules we've learned earlier. Then in the third one, we have this. Okay, so there is a formula for computing the argument values. 
So if we go through the process, we are going to get this to be our characteristic equation. Okay, so solving that is going to give us our lambda 1 to be negative 1 and our lambda 2 to be negative 3. So in this case, this metric is said to be negative definite since all our argument values are negative. Okay, so that's reducing the argument values. Now let's come to the second way of doing it, which is uh, much simpler. So that's using what we call the leading principal determinants. Okay, so before we can learn what a leading principal determinant is, we need to know what we call leading principal minor. So it's important we know what that is. So let's go through. So the leading principal minor of order k, the order is very important, of an n by n matrix, so of a square matrix, is obtained by deleting the last n minus k rules and their corresponding columns. Okay, so the keyword here is that we delete the last n minus k rules and their corresponding columns. So take note of that. You know, we have something we call the principal minor. Okay, with that one, we just delete any of the words n minus k rules and columns. By deleting, the keyword is that the last. So we did the last n minus k rules and their corresponding columns. So let's consider this matrix B for instance. If you are asked to find the leading principal minor of order 1, that is 1 because here the order, okay, so what is the dimension of our matrix? It's n by n, which is 3 by 3. So that means our n is what? 3. And here we are supposed to find the leading principal minor of order 1. So that means our k is 1. So n minus k will be 3 minus 1, which is 2. So that means you are supposed to delete the last two rows in your corresponding columns. So the last two rows, their corresponding columns. So you can see that um, the leading principal minor of other one is what? One. So that's why it is one here. When it comes to the second one, you are supposed to find of order 2. That means you are going to delete 3 minus 2, which is 1. So the last row and the last column. So we are going to delete the last row, the last column. So we end up with this. That's what you can see here. And the leading principal minor of order 3, of order 3, is the matrix itself, okay? So our matrix was B. So it is B itself. I hope you know why. Because when you have order 3, that means you're going to delete N is 3, K is 3. So you're going to delete 0 rows and what? 0 columns, the last 0 rows and the last. So that means you don't do any deletion here. So we are going to get the matrix B itself. So, note something. The determinant of a leading principal minor is called the leading principal determinant. Okay. And the number of leading principal determinants of our n by n matrix is n. So that means if you have a 3 by 3 matrix, the number of leading principal determinants will be 3. If it is 2 by 2, then 2. If it is 10 by 10, then 10. So based on knowing what principal leading principal determinants are then let's learn the rules for test for definiteness so test for positive definite matrices so the first point is that all our diagonal elements must be positive and the second one is that all the leading principal determinants must be positive so if this condition is satisfied, then we have a, a positive definite matrix. The third one is, um, the second one is test for positive semi-definite. So here, all diagonal elements are non-negative 
and all the principal determinants are non-negative as well okay that means we can have zero and other positive numbers so the test for negative definite and negative semi-definite matrices are opposite of the test for positive definite matrices okay so that means with that one all our diagonals are negative and also all our leading principal determinants are negative then for it to be negative semi-definite some of them will be zero and others will be negative okay then the test for um the test for negative um, def indefiniteness is when the signs interchange so when our signs interchange then we say that we have um an indefinite matrix okay so let's solve this example so the question says find the definiteness of the following matrices so you can see that here okay so you know when you take this matrix two by two so it's very simple the leading principal minor of order one is two because order one means we are deleting you know n is two by two so n is two then k is one so we are deleting the last row in the last column so we take this off we take this off we have two and the determinant of a constant is the same constant so determinant of two is two which is what greater than zero then the leading principal minor of order two it means two minus two zero so we are not deleting any row we're not deleting any column so that means it's the matrix itself okay so find the determinant of eight is going to give us three and three is greater than zero so since the first condition was satisfied, all our diagonals were what positive. And also all our leading principal determinants are positive. It means that our matrix is positive definite. The second one. <coughs> no, all our diagonal elements are positive. And when we find the leading principal minor of order one, we get one. When you find for the determinant of it, which is the leading principal determinant, we get one, which is greater than zero. Then of order two is the matrix itself. So when you find the determinant of the matrix, we get what zero. So you can see that one of them is given as zero, one of them is given as one. Right? So we have positive semi-definite so this is how we are able to find out whether a given symmetric matrix is either this definite or that definite and it's very very important in the study of um, optimization especially when we are given sufficient conditions so please take it very serious so in our next video we'll talk about how to find a convexity of a function. So see you in the next video. Thank you very much.